I'm continuing my reading. What I'm doing in this series is to read through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am reading in a chronological order of events, not according to publication or volume, so I will be skipping around just a little bit as I move along. In my last video, I read the first part of the last chapter of First Chronicles. <laughs> chapter 29. David gave his final uh, words in 28, then in 29 he invited all the people to join him in donating material and money and service to building the temple after Solomon becomes king. Now, we've finished this chapter out. It's not much left here. should be a short video, but let us read the end of David's life. We pick this up in verse 20. And David said to all the congregation, Now bless the Lord your God. And all the congregation blessed the Lord God of their fathers, and bowed down their heads and worshipped the Lord with the <coughs> and worshipped the Lord and the king. And they sacrificed sacrifices unto the Lord, and offered burnt offerings unto the Lord on the mor on the morrow after that day, even a thousand bullocks, a thousand rams, and a thousand lambs, with their drink offerings and sacrifices in abundance for all Israel. And did eat and drink before the Lord on that day with great gladness. And they made Solomon the son of king, uh, the son of David king the second time, and anointed him unto the Lord to be the chief governor, and Zadok to be the priest. So if you will recall, a little earlier, uh, Adonijah, David's third son, thought he was going to be king, and was kind of acting, he knew David was getting old, he knew his father was old, wasn't long for this world, and so he started acting like he was king. The, uh, Nathan and Bathsheba reported this to David, and David brought the people together and anointed Solomon to be king. Made it, it didn't just uh, state that he, oh, Solomon will be king when I'm dead, he anointed him king, he made him king while David was still alive. That was probably the beginning of that first year, uh, not first, first, beginning of the last year of David's life. And after he made Solomon king, that's when we see all these preparations being made, assigning the Levites their time of service, organizing the military, all this stuff. David is now preparing Solomon. So, okay, I'm not going to be alive much longer. Let's get it all set so that when I die, you can easily just move right in and take over. And now, he presents Solomon here before the congregation, meaning the general assembly. Probably not the entire nation, but at least the leaders of the nation and probably the people of the city of Jerusalem. And they again anoint Solomon to be king. Verse 23. Then Solomon sat on the throne of the Lord as king, as king instead of David his father, and prospered, and all Israel obeyed him. And all the princes, and the mighty men, and all the sons, likewise of King David, submitted themselves unto Solomon the king. And the Lord magnified Solomon exceedingly in the sight of all Israel, and bestowed upon him such royal majesty as had not been on any king before him in Israel. Now remember, there are not too many kings before him, so that's not saying a whole lot. David his father was king, Saul was king, uh, Saul's son Ishbosheth was king in the north while David was king in the south. And then there was uh, Abimelech who tried to become king and that whole thing failed. So there's not too much to compare him to. Verse 26. Thus David, the son of Jesse, reigned over all Israel. And the time that he reigned over Israel was forty years. Seven years reigned he in Hebron, and thirty and three years reigned he in Jerusalem. And he died in a good old age, full of days, riches, and honor. And Solomon his son reigned in his stead. Now the acts of David the king, first and last, behold, they are written in the book of, Sh of Samuel the seer, and in the book of Nathan the prophet, and in the book of Gad the seer. With all, <clears throat> with all his reign and his might, and the times that went over him, and over Israel, and over all the kingdoms of the countries. So this is at least the third, I mean, uh, this is at least four 
works of scripture that the author of what we have in First Chronicles is drawing from. Because remember, he mentioned the Chronicles of King David a few chapters ago. Now we have the books of Nathan the prophet, Gad the seer, and Samuel the seer. Now Samuel died before David actually became king. So I'm assuming that whatever is written in the book of Samuel the seer only covers the early days of David. But the author is here telling us what his source material was, what he was using in order to uh, write this record that we have. He was using what was written at the time, and he compiled it into what we have as the Book of Chronicles, much like Mormon does in the Book of Mormon. Mormon takes all the old records, and he compiles them into a unified story according to the inspirations of God to tell the story that God wants us to know. See, Mormon is a prophet historian. The writers of Samuel and the writers of Chronicles and the writers of Kings, these guys were, we don't know who they were, but they were also prophet historians. And just like Mormon, Mormon, all through the Book of Mormon, talks about we know that this is true because we have the records. And that's what the author of First Chronicles is telling us. We can trust what he wrote because the re he has he at least had the records. He knew he knew what he was writing was true because he could read what these what these older prophets had written. And again, the records are very important. It's not when we talk about the scriptures, but the scriptures are not just nice sayings and spiritual thoughts. They are the proof of God's actions throughout history. They are our identity as a people. The records are vital. They establish who God is, who we are in relation to him. And without the records, we lose our identity. I might talk about that a little bit more later, but I find it very interesting that the Bible still makes mention of other works. There were records written at the time that these events happened, and later historians, later prophets, prophet historians, took those original records and abridged and condensed them into a unified story. Anyways, we will leave that there. This was the last chapter in First Chronicles. As we progress, we are going to first step back to the Book of Mormon briefly in the Book of Ether, but then we will be reading in First Kings and Second Chronicles together because they will now start to tell a parallel story just as Second Samuel and First Chronicles did. Of course, Second Chronicles will be parallel to both First and Second Kings, so we'll see how it goes. We'll read about the life of Solomon as we progress.